you're working on your string lab and what is it supposed to look like in the end? Here I have the results of my testing code when I run it. I'm gonna show you part of it, but it's important to see what it's supposed to look like at the end. So here I believe is every method in the lab and I print out the method name, what I'm sending to the method and the result of what it sends back. And I showed you the code that tests first and I think last already. So you know what the testing code looks like for these. I did isval and I sent it an F and it's false. Of course, I need to send it a val and make sure it actually works for true. Uh, val count, it counts how many vowels are in a race car and there's three. Uh, letter count, how many letter letters R are in race car, there's two. I'm gonna go and change the values here and get different results. And then digit sum is quite tricky. Uh, and two plus four plus seven is 13. Uh, my last method capitalize the first letter of each word. Uh, mine is not running correctly, so it's capitalizing all the letters of each word, so that's obviously not going to get me full points if I turn this lab in. Uh, but I'm not worried about getting that working. I want to show you what the testing code looks like. We're going to look specifically at letter count. What does that testing code look like? I've so far just duplicated the code to test first. And the string that I used, I just gave it a new value, race car, which I spelled incorrectly, but that's not really important. The other thing I did is I commented out almost all the other test code, uh, at least every piece of test code that uses a print statement, I commented out because I didn't want to see the results of a bunch of other tests getting in the way of the test I'm trying to uh, work on right now. Okay. We're not testing first, we are testing letter count. Two, uh, two ways you can see the what's called the method signature. One of them is in the code, you can go down to where letter counts defined and it needs to get a, a word, or I should say a string, and then a char or a character. So the name of the method is letter count and it's looking for a string and a char. So you can go ahead and copy letter count. Now there's a second way. So I could scroll down in my code to see it, but I don't want to do that because I don't want you to see all the rest of my code. But the other way uh, to see the name of the method and the parameters are in the navigator here. If you don't see the navigator, go window and navigator control seven. And this lets you see the name of the method and the parameters it takes and also the return value is going to return an int and it goes string and then char. All right, I've already copied the name and let's go ahead and paste the name here. And if you notice, we have an error. So what's this error say? Uh, it said method letter count in, uh, in the class cannot be applied to given types. It's requiring a string and a character and all it found is a string. So in here, I have the parentheses. I've only listed a string. I have not also listed a character. So I need a character here. So I'll call my character C. And remember, characters are single quotes. Let's look for an R inside of here. Okay. I have to now, after that, put in the second. It's a C. Okay. It's holding the value R. I know that gets confusing. So now at least their error is gone. So now it's gonna call the method letter count with a string and a character. And we're gonna run it. Okay, getting a little better. And we need to make sure it's not calling the method first. It's calling the method letter count. So we need to make sure what's printing on the screen is accurate. So it's going letter count. Now it's not just taking the string, it's also taking the character. So I wanna add the character in and pr to the printed results. So we're gonna go comma. Now I can't just go C like this. If I run it here, I'll have the letter C, not the value that's stored in the variable C. So I have to 
stop the quote, start it again, and I need a plus on each side. So this will put the comma, print the comma in between the two. There we go. So it's, you see race car, uh, R, and there should be two of them. I don't need to quote the two. The reason I quoted the output on the other ones because the output was a string. So that's the last quote. And just this right here. These are escape characters. That's the first quote. All right, the result of counting R in race cars too. Excellent. All right, so I feel good about this. Now we need to test and make sure that uh, it works for other letters. So I see two C's, I see one A. Let's look for A's. Uh, oh, we have two A's. Wow, I was wrong about that. That's two of every letter. Let's go zebra, let's look for a Z. Should be one. All right, excellent. Let's look for a Q. There should be zero. It's important. This is called the boundary case. Uh, is where your, uh, we know the count should be zero here. All right, so I feel pretty good about this test code. And that is how you create it. I've labeled it. So when you go to test, uh, if you're doing digit sum next, you can start by labeling it. You could copy and paste this, but remember digit sum is different. Digit sum takes as input an integer, not a string. So that's very different. When you go digit sum, you're gonna have to send it one int, not two things and no, no strings or characters, but one integer. So the method's really important. Uh, the signature of the method's really important to get correct. And again, the navigator I find very useful for figuring out what uh, the method signatures are.